It's hard to believe, but one year after Hurricane Harvey, many folks are still not back in their homes. To share their experience in this difficult situation, we have two Pasadena residents, Jamie Sutherland and Lonnie Smith. Welcome to Houston Life, Thank both you. of you. Thank you. Uh, I can't even imagine what 12 months looks like, the last 12 months for you guys. But Jamie, let me start with you first of all. You guys, you and your husband, lost everything. Pretty much. We had almost, oh, close to three feet of water in our home. So it was, it was pretty bad, pretty devastating. And uh, you also had a, a petting zoo, is that what right. I understand? We have a pony ride petting zoo business that we do on the side, and we house the animals in the property adjacent to our home. And so we had pretty much moved most of them out to higher ground, but there were some that, you know, we were waiting, sure. but the water came up pretty fast oh my gosh fast. that's heartbreaking and your son tried to get the rest out by jet ski and it wasn't he, well, successful he came over to basically check on their welfare and the the ponies were up on high ground and he found them and they were okay so uh, he, you know four o'clock in the morning he was on jet ski trying to check their welfare so had you ever flooded before in that area this will be our third time oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, i'm wow. so sorry and now you're living with uh your daughter she's not back in her home your home has roof and floor problems or that's your daughter's no her her home didn't flood okay so we're okay there and, and this is video of yours, inside though. your home right and oh. that was actually after the water had gone down quite a bit it was up another foot does it still hurt when you see this video even a year later? What goes through your mind? Actually, when I sent the photos, I had not seen them yet, so it was, it was difficult. pretty overwhelming when I saw it. Um, it must be so surreal. See. We had just piled everything up as much as we could before it to prepare, but it was things were just floating around the house. Yeah. You can see, I don't there, know if you can see, there's the cat dog and the dog, and wow. top of the sofa. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And Lonnie, had you flooded before as well? Never have. Been. You you never had. But I understand years. you didn't have flood insurance because you couldn't find a company that well, would cover Well, our you. roof was bad, so that insurance wouldn't cover us, right? So, and that roof did just as much damage as the, the flood waters, of water coming in through the roof. So we lost ceilings and everything on the floor too. Oh my gosh, so you had water coming in from top, top and, and bottom. the yeah. bottom. And at what point did you realize this was more than just a little water that you had to get out. <laughs> when I was moving the pans around from the dripping water and then the water, pan started floating because the water was coming in. <laughs> coming in too fast. But we actually stayed through it, so I had her and the dogs up on the couch from old coffee cans. I lifted that up and got it before the flood. And Jamie and I actually live on the same bio. She's yeah. further downstream than I am. But uh, when I saw the water lapping against the bridge over the bow, I knew that we were fixing to get it, so. Yeah. You also has lo have lost everything. Um, your wife is disabled and can't move back into the home during the repairs because of some mold issues. Well, is we, that... you'd be amazed how quick the mold and mildew starts. A hundred percent, I know. You know, we spent the first few days after the after we moved in with my sister, moved over to my sister's, we spent the next few days helping other people and trying to get our stuff together. And we'll go back to the house and all of our empty, there's, there's mold and mildew on the there's mildew, it's mildew really, mm -hmm. on the ceilings. And so. Lonnie, it's incredible that you have, we're seeing some photos right now of just uh, what sort of bad shape the home is currently in. You've had a number of blows, including having your home burglarized, <laughs> yeah. thieves stole, all kinds of items, your tools while you were trying to fix the home. But despite all of these things that you've been going through at home, you've been volunteering your time to go and help other folks rebuild their homes. Where does that, uh, I don't know, fire grit, or, or yeah. grit come from? Because I don't know if a lot of it's people would what we do. that way. It's, it's what we do. We help each other. That's just the way I was raised, and that's what people do. You help your neighbors. I think it's probably a little bit of healing. I mean, I know that you have a, both of you have a long road of recovery, um, but if you can help somebody else, does that it help does. your recovery a little bit? Sure it, does. it does. In my position uh, in the permit department, we see the influx of people getting permits to repair and just them being able to tell their story mm -hmm. is it's healing because they understand that I've been there and they, they know that I do understand. So it, it's real helpful.
That is so fantastic. This group, by the way, we should mention, is called Team Up to Clean, to Clean Up. And you guys get together dozens of volunteers to do everything from light spackling jobs to repairing people's uh, yards and their homes, roof replacements. I mean, this is a big, generous. big deal. Mm -hmm. And so are you trying now to recruit more volunteers to come in and yes. help? We are. It's uh, the 7th and 8th. It's going to be the 7th and 8th. Uh, from September. Of September. Okay. We're doing, uh, like you said, we've got 10 roofs coming. We've got sponsors, Chevron Phillips, uh, TNT Construction, Western Waste. They're all contributing. Um, and this is also through a partnership with Habitat for Humanity as well. Habitat right? for Humanity is involved. It's all through our neighborhood networks division oh, at the city. And I believe the volunteer applications, you can go online at ci.pasadena.tx.us. There's the number there on the screen if you can help uh, on September 7th and 8th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. 30 minutes could make a difference in someone's life. Absolutely. And Jamie and Lonnie, please come back and keep us updated on your situation. We'll do. We hope for nothing but the best. And I think it's great that you both have such positive attitudes. Thanks. Your, Thank you, you very others. much. Thank All you. right, folks. Uh, by the way, the Houston Stronger segment you just saw was brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And after the break, one year after Hurricane Harvey, the local business is reaffirming its commitment to being fair, honest, to give back. And their stories coming up.